the payload function. So if we wanted to add our own payload type. So we have the format payload function here. Uh, we've added a handler for a payload type called stuff. Uh, and it's kind of just pseudocode here, but you'll see that in under case stuff, that's where you would generate your own data that gets inserted into the notification as a payload. And then for anything else, we hand that back to the parent class uh, to handle any of the other uh, potential payload types. So, um, <coughs> so notification category. So um, what is a notification category? So basically, a notification category is used to manage uh, notification uh, in groups. For example, uh, we want to set uh, the batch email priority for set of uh, notifications. And we also want to set the API uh, our reference for, for a set of uh, notification. Basically, this will uh, make the, uh, the, implement the implementation easier and also makes the, uh, the, the, the UI, the user uh, experience uh, much better. So, um, in ECO, there are some defined uh, categories. For uh, example, the API user talk, the page review, and the system. Page review is currently used uh, for the, all the uh, notification coming from the uh, page duration uh, extension, uh, which handles the uh, uh, page review, the timing, and the notification. Uh, and uh, you can uh, you can also uh, uh, create uh, a new category by uh, adding it to existing uh, category logos. Uh, so uh, so in this in this example. Uh, Creating a page within a uh, and assigning a priority file, setting the node to display a property with the graph value, and move forward to uh, the details of the next one. So, the priority. The priority is used to set the, uh, the, the notification priorities. Uh, basically, uh, this will make sure that uh, all the notification with the high priority on top of the email uh, address and uh, make sure it doesn't fall below the uh, the uh, post non essential uh, notification. Um, so also in some cases uh, we may want do not want a, 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 a user to uh, we do not want a user to, 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 to have the ability to uh, the up out from the uh, Notification, for example, uh, the, uh, the user talk, uh, add user talk, uh, notification from one user to come up. So in that, in that case, we set up uh, a graph uh, node and a graph value for the node is an attribute. Uh, um, but in general, we do not want to, uh, we do not encourage the uh, web developers to set this value because we want a uh, user to have the ability to. Uh, so um, for the tooltip, it basically uh, stores the category uh, detail, the notification category detail, and then you can use that uh, information in, uh, in, 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 in anywhere you want. And the last one is user group. Um, so it's used to determine uh, which user group is uh, eligible to receive a set of notifications. And so by, by, by default, this is uh, just an, an empty uh, array that means uh, everyone is able to, uh, is eligible to receive a notification. So, um, so you can, so in this example, uh, if I'm adding the page review no, uh, category to the page deletion no notification, uh, it's pretty simple. And also, the category is not required for the uh, notification definition because if a notification has no category, it just put it back to the other category. So next is the uh, notification format class. Um, so, so after we set up, after a notification is created, we need to format that uh, in either the web or the email. And that's the responsibility of the uh, formatter class. And basically, it it's handles all formattings and uh, different other format of file, archive, emails, HTML, 
Nadia and Axelia. And um, so we're pleased. So each notification type can only need to provide a message and uh, to test the parameter tokens. And this is pretty neat. And uh, to, to refresh your memory, um, uh, so in this example, uh, this is a typical like uh, top page uh, notification. And uh, so, in, in, so in this case, the, uh, the user is the, uh, is the token. So basically, it's a variable uh, inside a message. So um, custom form format class. So um, so in some cases, you may want to create your own uh, format class. The reason is that uh, some of the existing format class may not have all the parameter tokens, and all, all the or a particular notification wants you uh, have your own custom formatting uh, implementation of the API. So having a custom parameter. So basically, uh, in the custom class, all you need to do is uh, create find a function of class param, and this will override the parent method. And so in this example, I'm, uh, I'm creating a user registration page token and, and pass to the, uh, the message after. And if not is matched, basically go back to the uh, parent vector. Um, how write the parent vector? So as I said uh, as I said uh, earlier, um, the notification we want to override the uh, existing behavior. Um, for example, uh, the default filter is just uh, just the timestamp pass Secondarily, and you may want to just uh, have your own, uh, if you want to have your own custom implementation, you can just uh, override the collector uh, method. Uh, uh, next, we will have some rules. Right, so, to implement your notification, there Echo provides two hooks that you'll need to utilize. Uh, the first one is before create Echo event and Echo get default notified users. So, the first one, uh, before create echo event, this one is used to define the notifications themselves as well as any notification categories and custom icons that you might want. Uh, so in this really simplified example here, uh, you'll see we're just uh, adding my category to the categories array, we're adding my notification to the notifications array, and we're adding a path to a custom icon to the icon array. Uh, in the other uh, hook here, echo get default notified users. This is the one that is used to define who actually receives your notification. So this is actually an example from the getting started extension, although it's a, it's a little bit simplified here. Uh, but you'll see the basic way that it works is it's, it, it sees if the event type matches this particular notification, which in this case is getting started, edit, st getting started, start editing, uh, then it adds a new user into the user array. Uh, the ID for the for the user uh, is in this case uh, is the the agent, and the agent is whoever uh, actually triggered the notification. So this is a very simple. This is probably the simplest case that you come up with. Uh, but you can imagine some other cases where, uh, like for example, uh, if you were nominating an article for deletion, you might want the recipient to be the person who created the article. So in that case, instead of using the agent, you would uh, then have some programmatic logic that would find the creator and add them as the user who receives them. So, um, so creating a notification is pretty simple. All you need to do is uh, assign the values to the different properties and then uh, pass that uh, to the echo and then create method. And then the notification will be created. And um, so just to, uh, so I will explain all the detail of the different properties in, the, uh, in, in this slide. So the type is the uh, notification type. Basically, uh, it must be defined in the uh, echo notification. Otherwise, the, uh, the system will think it's an invalid notification. So the title is the, uh, is, is, is the, is the, uh, is the title object, which is the notification created form. And the agent is the user agent who triggers the notification. And all of these two are options. And the extra is a way that you can save uh, some uh, additional uh, notification information so that you can use later on to uh, format your notification. So, 
react to two other pages. Um, another occasion can be triggered by anywhere, like the uh, books or uh, after saying the page. So in this example, now, uh, this is the user right hook notification. It's triggered by the uh, user right hook. So what I'm doing here is that I I create a user right function and then register that to the user right hook. And then whenever a, a user right changes, it automatically create a file and a, a, a user right notification. So um, so notification should be triggered with caution because you do not want to send out to many notifications to the user because otherwise you think that's a spam. So um, this can be handled with web and email bundling. And um, so to, to enable email bundling, we need to uh, like, uh, define a bundle key in the notification definition. And then, uh, so in this, in this example, I'm, I'm, in, I'm, in, I'm, I'm, in, I'm, I'm in enabling the, uh, the bundling for the web notification, but uh, disabling the, uh, the bundling for the uh, email notification. So, and also, uh, we also need to create a uh, define a bundle message. So, uh, so this is a typical uh, uh, bundle message for a uh, uh, top page notification. And um, uh, so, in this uh, in this example, uh, the, the, the first parameter is just the bundle iterator, is which is uh, the user agent, the, the, the user, and the second parameter is a bundle number, is the number of XR is first. We also need to define a bundle rule, which uh, it's used to like uh, to, to it 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 it, uh, it, to, it determines like which uh, individual bundle notification to uh, to bundle together. So uh, this can be done uh, via the uh, the echo the bundle rule. So uh, basically, it's passing a, a bundle string, and this string it, it is more like a string to bundle the notification together. So in, in, so in this example, I'm uh, defining a, uh, a bundle uh, string for the added user to notification. Basically, it's a define of the, 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 the notification type and then pass the, uh, the user namespace or user, uh, or user name. So once, once this is done, any uh, unread notification with the same bundle string will be bundled together. So we do like uh, uh, X, uh, user A, and So bundling iterator. So by default, the iterator is always the agent who triggers uh, the notification. And so if you if you want to uh, have a different iterator, that's fine. You can always override the method to have your own iterator mechanism. For example, the page related notification on the top, click the front page instead of the agent. Want to create your notification? very important that you monitor it so that uh, you keep an eye on its usage and make sure you know it's not the volume isn't out of control or nobody's using it. Uh, the good news is that uh, Echo uses event logging out of the box, so you a lot of this is actually handled for you. Uh, you can go in the stats database and get stats uh, on your particular notification through event logging. Um, and uh, we also have some URLs here for some dashboards that already have some graphs that you can look at. Uh, the first one is on the Editor Engagement Dashboard site. Uh, and this one just kind of gives some more uh, general overviews of Echo usage. Uh, it, whereas the, the next two uh, give more specific uh, breakdowns for different notification types on Ian Wiki and for MediaWiki. And once it's deployed elsewhere, we'll have dashboards available for other sites as well. Uh, so you can go into there and actually look and see like how your particular uh, notification category that you're utilizing compares, uh, is being utilized over time compared with the usage of other notifications. So if you have, if you need any more information about how to implement notifications, we have some uh, pretty good online documentation. If you go to mediawiki.org, uh, go to the main Echo page, and uh, you can either go, go to the URL developer guide, or at the very bottom, there's a link to it. Uh, we also have the editor engagement mailing list, if you want to sign up for that, you can, you can get on the mailing list and ask any questions or ask for feedback, and we'd be happy to help you. Uh, and of course, there's also the Editor Engagement IRC channel if you want to talk to people in real time. Uh, 
so that's it for our presentation. Uh, if you guys have any questions, we'd be happy to take them. Actually, um, you can, if you want to, you, you can uh, specifically limit it to certain output formats. Uh, we didn't cover any of that because it's a, it's a little bit more detailed than what we wanted to cover. Um, but I'll, 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 I'll check in the documentation and make sure that's in there. Um, it probably is, but I'll, I'll double check and make sure we have some information on that in there. All right, thanks a lot.